Hello, my name is Brandon Downer, and I'm a formulation application scientist with Corteva AgriScience. I'd like to use this time today to give you a closer look at the research and development that goes into creating a new herbicide formulation. And my hope is that this glimpse behind the curtain, so to speak, will give you a better understanding of all the work that comes with our crop protection solutions. And further, why we at Corteva spend so much time and effort to produce these products, including how we stack up to a different experience as compared to generic herbicides. First off, let's talk about Corteva on a global scale. I'm based out of the U.S. headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana, though we have locations in more than 140 countries. These locations include more than 100 production and manufacturing facilities and more than 150 research and development facilities. And throughout these worldwide locations, I have more than 21,000 colleagues. As a company, Corteva has received roughly 12,000 patents for products using more than 65 active ingredients. Not every one of those 20,000 people work on every new formulation. But for those of us that do, we know it's not a process to be taken lightly. It takes a lot of time, effort, resources, and yes, investments to make it possible. A new herbicide formulation from the discovery of that active ingredient to the launch of the first product will take roughly 10 years, and it will require a team of hundreds of people. And we know not every product that we release contains entirely new active ingredients. Sometimes these are improved formulations of existing products or new combinations of existing active ingredients. To develop these though, it still requires two to five years. To level set, a formulation is a way to deliver an active ingredient to a specific target site in a usable form. And this typically refers to a specific composition or recipe containing an active ingredient or several active ingredients, which can typically make up to 40% of a product, along with other materials called coformulants. And these remaining 60% can include things such as diluents and solvents, emulsifiers, stabilizers, and performance aids. And these coformulants can really make the difference between one formulation and another. Now that we've run the numbers and we've talked a little bit about what a formulation is, let's talk about testing. And that's my area of expertise. Once we realize that a herbicide can control weeds, we run it through dozens of tests to ensure that you can use the product not only safely, but relatively easily. And it's important to note that if at any point in this testing process, the formulation fails, we reformulate it and we start the testing from the beginning. As a scientist, it's my job to figure out how far I can stretch these products until they no longer work because I wanna find these failure points in the lab so that you don't find them in the field. Now, let's talk about a few of these tests that we perform. The first test I'd like to talk about is our extreme storage stability testing. We know that a single one of our herbicide products can be used in a wide variety of climates. So we need to know if it can withstand the cold of a North Dakota winter and the heat of a Mississippi summer. We'll store it in a multitude of temperatures and packages to ensure that our products can withstand this variation. Next up is material compatibility. A herbicide needs to come in contact with many different materials. These can range from plastics and elastomers to metals, and these can all be found in applicators, pumps, and filters. So we perform long-term immersion tests with all of these materials to determine if the solution will affect them. And finally, tank mixing. A big frustration in the field is when tank mix partners are incompatible, and we don't want you to experience that frustration. So we perform hundreds of jar tests to examine the compatibility of the formulation with possible tank mix partners. These are just a handful of the dozens of tests that a new formulation undergoes at Corteva. And remember, if at any point in this testing process, a formulation fails or can't be fixed, we take it out of that process, we reformulate it, and we start the tests over again. And once a product is released, our job still isn't over. If the unexpected happens in the field, Corteva will be there to make it right. And that's why we recommend reaching out to your local retailer and they can work directly with your Corteva territory manager, who in turn work with people just like me in the lab to figure out the issues. Because remember, when you choose a Corteva product, you're getting a value that goes beyond just weed control. You're getting support of a company that is invested in making sure that your needs are met. You're going to get the complete customer service experience and access. 
which you may not necessarily get with generic products. Thank you for joining me to learn a little bit more about the research and development process at Corteva. Be sure to stay up to date with the latest corn weed control information by visiting corteva.us and navigating to Corn Herbicides HQ.